So let's now uh, derive our sufficient statistic formula for optimal monetary policy. Um, so that formula is going to be valid in any um, divine uh, pixel beverage model. So in any of this model in this in this class, uh, the formula will apply. So uh, first thing we want to do, uh, so let's take one such divine pixel beverage model uh, and let's try to you know, derive the formula there just using the underlying structure that we've assumed. So first question is, you know, uh, what is the optimal Uh, monetary policy in such a model. How does it look like? Well, so first of all, um, these are models with a beverage curve. So it's a model in which you always have some unemployment. So, uh, so we have some unemployment view. That's because we, we have a beverage model. So we're going to focus on unemployment. Second, these are uh, Vixel models. So these are models in which the nominal interest rate is able to control aggregate demand and therefore control the amount of activity in the economy. Uh, so these are models in which the interest rate will be able um, to control, the nominal interest rate will be able to control unemployment. So here, uh, so we are looking for the, um, we are looking for the optimal nominal interest rate. So, uh, so because we're in a Vixelian model, the interest rate can control unemployment. And here we're looking for the optimal nominal interest rate. So what's it going to satisfy? So nominal interest rate determines unemployment. What's the level of unemployment that we want? Well, uh, so in practice, we know, you know the mandate of the Fed is to bring inflation to target and bring unemployment, you know, bring the economy to full employment. So bring basically the unemployment rate to a sufficient level. But here we, we are looking at a divine model. So these are models in which when you bring unemployment to the efficient unemployment rate, then the inflation is at target, either because inflation is exogenous or because um, through its curve mechanism, inflation will get to its target when the unemployment rate is at its efficient level. Uh, so the only thing we care about at the end, therefore, in this type of model, that there is only one thing to do is to bring the unemployment rate to its efficient level. And so the optimal uh, nominal interest rate will be such that the unemployment rate at that interest rate is going to be equal to U star, where U star is the efficient unemployment rate, and that can be expressed uh, in sufficient statistics because we're in a Bavrugian model, and we've seen how to do that. Uh, so overall, this is how we can characterize the optimal monetary policy. It's a nominal interest rate, such that the unemployment that comes out of that nominal interest rate will be the efficient unemployment rate. Okay, so that's kind of the high-level characterization uh, of monetary policy. So it's, you know, it's particularly simple, but it's very different from what you may have seen in other uh, monetary models, like in the Dukenzian model. You don't really get um, explicit expression for the uh, optimal. Uh, nominal interest rate. But here uh, you get something that's uh, very simple. It just says that nominal interest rate has to be set so that the unemployment that results from that nominal interest rate is the efficient unemployment rate. So now that this characterization of the optimal monetary policy, the question that we're asking is, I'm starting from some unemployment rate, some nominal interest rate, you know, the current levels, what should the Fed do you know, to respond to uh, current events and to shock the table curves? Um, so, and that's what our solution statistic formula is going to do. From any current situation, it's going to give us the optimal nominal interest rate that the Fed uh, should set. Uh, So, so solution statistic formula, what does it uh, do? So it's given uh, 
current unemployment rate u and with interest rate i gives um, the optimal nominal interest rate i star. So basically, uh, it gives uh, optimal policy to the Fed because the Fed, of course, always sets you know, the Fed funds rate with an interest rate to so give optimal policy to Fed uh, given current situation. That's what our our sufficient statistic formula is going to do. Um, so it's quite practical. You take the take stock of the current situation and you spit out an optimal nominal interest rate that the Fed can just set. Uh, of course, in the real world, you know, there are dynamics, there are lags, everything's slow moving. We don't have all the information um, at any given time, but um, at least this high star that comes out could be a, a target. You know, maybe the Fed is constrained, they cannot change their rate quickly. Uh, but at least this I star could be used uh, as a target for the Fed. So how do we derive this formula? Uh, well, it's very simple. Let's derive it. We just actually need uh, to do uh, a quick first order uh, expansion, uh, and that will be it. So how do we derive that formula? Well. So we'll use a, a first order uh, Taylor expansion of the function that is the unemployment rate uh, to the nominal interest rate. So here we know that we're in a Beveridgean model, so there is always some unemployment. We're in so we you know we're in a class of Vixelian model, so this unemployment rate is determined by the interest rate, okay? So, so there's a function that for any nominal interest rate gives you an unemployment rate, okay? We don't know what that function is, but it's not relevant. We know that that function exists. Uh, okay, that's due to the uh, BEV. That's because we're in a BEV framework and at the same time a Vixelian framework. So, you know, we are looking at a divine uh, vixel beverage framework. So um, that's why we have this. So we have this function u of i. Now what we can do is a first order Taylor expansion around uh, around. So it's a function of the nominal interest rate. So we can do a Taylor expansion around the optimal uh, nominal interest rate, where of course the unemployment is equal to u star. So if we do that expansion, so we get that u of i star, u of i, so I do my uh, first order Taylor expansion is u of i star plus du di, so the derivative of the function with respect to i times i minus i star plus, you know, a second order term that we can, uh, that we can omit. Okay, uh, so that's true up to a second order term. So ui is u of i star plus du di i minus i star. So that's if I do my first order uh, Taylor expansion. Now, as I said, u of star by definition that the unemployment rate when monetary policy is optimal. Uh, and so that's the efficient unemployment rate. So we can rewrite this u of i. So u of i is just the current interest that you can rewrite it as u, is u star, because that's u of i star, because du di, that's the response of the uh, unemployment rate to the interest rate, i minus i star. Okay, and uh, 
But now, of course, we can reshuffle this because you remember our objective is that we know that current nominal interest rate is I, current unemployment rate is U, and we want to figure out what is I star, that is, what is the nominal interest rate where the Fed should go. So we need to uh, we need to isolate I star here. So if we reshuffle it, we get that I minus I star is equal to um, U minus U star, and then I can divide this by uh, du di. Okay, this is just uh, reshuffling these things. And then because really the object of our focus is giving the Fed some I star, we can rewrite this as I star is equal to I. So basically you start from uh, your current nominal interest rate minus uh, u minus u star divided by du di so this is our sufficient statistic formula uh, that we have here So what are the different uh, what are the different elements in it? So just to recap, so I that's the current uh, nominal interest rate. I start at the optimal nominal interest rate. U minus U star. You recognize this that the gap between the uh, current and efficient unemployment rates, this is just our unemployment gap. And so uh, that's something that we've talked a lot before. And then DUDI, the that's a new object that we haven't seen before. That's what we call the monetary multiplier. So you can see this is something that, that tells us the change in unemployment in percentage point when nominal interest rate increases by uh, one percentage point. So delta in unemployment and that measures in percentage point when uh, nominal interest rate increases by one percentage point okay uh, and so of course uh, this DUDI is positive because we know that when the nominal interest rate goes up uh, unemployment tends to increase you know, when the nominal interest rate goes up that tends to contract aggregate demand and leads to a higher uh, unemployment rate So because uh, I or I, which is for instance going on right now, um, the Fed has been raising rates and we expect that the unemployment rate is going to increase. Doesn't increase much yet, but I expect this is probably going to pick up soon uh, because higher I leads to higher U. Okay, so these are the different elements in the formula. Uh, and so these are sufficient statistics because these things are estimable, you know, I that we have here that you can just observe it. That's just, uh, you know, this would be like the Fed funds rate. So I star, that's what we are trying to measure. U minus U star, that's the unemployment gap, but that we've seen how uh, that, that can be expressed in terms of uh, sufficient statistic. Um, so for instance, in a simple beverage GM model, uh, it can be just U minus square root UV. Uh, okay, so in that case, of course, unemployment rate is observable, vacancy rate is observable. Uh, so this you could just measure it directly in the data. Uh, or it could be kind of a more uh, sophisticated uh, formula. But even when it's more sophisticated, um, it only depends on uh, a couple of sufficient statistics. Um, so U minus U star uh, in any case can be uh, expressed in terms of sufficient statistics. That, so something that you can measure directly in the data. 
DUDI is the monetary multiplier. And so what's good is that that's not like a parameter of the model. It just tells you if you have an exogenous change in monetary policy, what, the what is the response of the unemployment rate? It turns out a lot of people have measured this DUDI uh, using a bunch of econometric techniques, and we're going to talk about this, uh, how to do it. Okay, so these are the elements of the, uh, of the formula. And what, what are, what's the implication of the formula? What does it say so we can look at it? Well, imagine that there is a positive unemployment gap. So that means there is too much unemployment. So U minus U star is positive. And we know that DUDI is also positive because an increase in interest rate leads to a higher unemployment rate. So this formula is saying that if there is a positive unemployment gap, if there is too much unemployment, what should you do? You should take your current interest rate i and you should reduce something you should lower it by something that's positive and that depends on the size of the unemployment gap and the size of the multiplier so this formula is just telling you if you have too much unemployment you've got to cut rates that's very reasonable um, if you have too little unemployment it's the opposite you need to raise rates um, that's kind of what's going on right now um, and of course this formula is also so this is a like qualitative insight but of course it's also telling, telling you that if your unemployment gap is bigger then you need to, uh, you know, if the unemployment gap is positive and bigger, you need to uh, lower your rates more. If your unemployment gap is bigger, but in the negative territory, you need to reduce your rates more. You can see it because the U minus U star is in the numerator. You can also see that how much you should respond to the unemployment gap depends on the monetary multiplier. So actually, if monetary policy is very powerful, so if you have a very big DUDI, then in the formula, the changes in the, in the unemployment gap are dampened. So if your policy is very powerful, then you need to use it very parsimoniously. So you need to reduce rates or increase rates in a smaller amount because the policy is so powerful and you don't want to overshoot. If your policy is not very powerful, so you have a small DUDI, then you can see that the uh, you know, positive or negative unemployment gaps are going to be amplified. So of course, if your policy is not very powerful, given that the goal is to get back to the efficient unemployment rate, the goal is to eliminate the unemployment gap. If your policy is not very powerful, you need to use a lot of changes in nominal interest rate to bring the economy back to, uh, to the efficient unemployment rate. So that's what comes out here. Uh, so this is, you know, this is a particularly uh, simple formula. It's particularly uh, easy to use. Now what we'll do is, so we've already seen how we can measure the unemployment gap to minus U star. Now we're going to see how we can measure the monetary multiplier of the UDI, and then we'll see what it means for an even kind of more practical uh, policy recommendations.